CPU Galaxy. Welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel and today with some sockets re-overclocking. Yeah, again we have here, here the ASUS PBI486 SP3 which I showed already in some of my previous videos for benchmarkings. But today I would like to max out this board to see what is the maximum of performance we could get out of this. Yeah, overclocking is normally not so in my scope here and we will not do here sophisticating science with special bit settings and drivers for each CPU to squeeze the real maximum maximum out of it. It should be just uh, some common overclocking which everybody would be able to do who is not an expert at all. And basically I was really surprised about the results I could get here with this mainboard compared to other videos on YouTube I found so far. As which CPUs we are going to torture today and compare, first the Socket 3 Pentium Overdrive normally clocked at 83 MHz, a beautiful chip with integrated cooler and real Pentium power, we will overclock to 100 MHz. Then the AMD X5 133, the latest true 486 CPU and of course the fastest 486 which is normally running at 133 MHz and today overclocked to 160. <laughs> yeah, and the third one, the Sarix 5x86 CPU, it is something between the 486 and the real Pentium. Sarix shrink down the 6 x86 core to make it compatible in a socket 3 system. Yeah, this version here with 100 MHz which we will run at the end at 120 MHz. And yes, I know there is a 120 MHz version existing, but they are extremely rare and expensive. Therefore I'm taking here parts which you should normally get on eBay. Yeah, let's have a quick overview of the main board. The revision I'm using here is 1.2, actually there are several revisions existing uh, and not all revisions are supporting some overclocking or running stable overclocked uh, CPUs. Um, this board is now equipped with two 8 MB uh, fast page memory with access time of 60 nanoseconds which should be fast enough to max out the values in the BIOS. Over here 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache with access time of 15 nanoseconds. Yeah, unfortunately the PCI implementation of this chipset is not the best, therefore I'm using the VESA local bus for my video card. Yeah, and as a video card uh, I'm using uh, this VESA local bus card, the ARC 1000 made by Hercules. Um, actually in my last video where I did the DX4 comparison benchmark um, I was using the Zeng ET 4000 W 32, um, which is already a fast um, video card, but I found out after some testing and a hint of uh, a viewer from mine um, that the ARC 1000 is a bit faster and indeed this one is now the fastest VESA local bus card I could find so far. Um, if you have any information uh, about other VESA local bus cards which might be faster or with a better performance, just leave me a comment below. I would be very interested on your experience. Last but not least, just our IDE to SD card adapter, where I have everything pre-installed already for our benchmarking. Yeah, before we start, let me give you some uh, technical overview and details about each CPU. The AMD X5 was introduced in September 1995 with a frontside bus of 33 MHz and an internal multiplier of 4, this CPU gets boosted to 133 MHz. It has 16 KB of level 1 cache and comes up with 1.6 million transistors. And as I said already, this CPU is a legend and the fastest real 486 CPU out there. The Cyrix 5X86 was introduced in August 1995 also with a frontside bus of 33 MHz and a multiplier of 3 to 100 MHz internally. It has 16 KB of level 1 cache as well and comes up with 2 million transistors. The Intel Pentium Overdrive was introduced in October 1995 also with 33 MHz of frontside bus and a multiplier of 2.5 to 83 MHz. This is here the lowest clocked CPU but with the highest developed technology. By side 32 KB of cache and 3.3 million transistors, this CPU should have the strongest floating point unit here and is of course a serious competitor. 
For overclocking, we will put the front side bus to 40 MHz, which will give us at the end also a higher CPU clock. Also, the memory throughput, level cache performance, and video card will improve by the higher bus clock. So at the end we have here three CPUs which got introduced within three months in the same year and I'm already very curious about the outcome now. And I just need to set the jumper according to the table for the CPU type and the front side bus of 40. Also my self-made LEDs, reset switch and speaker directly on the pin header is also something very handy while testing boards on the bench. Here for cooling I don't mess around with some thermal paste or so, I just take a huge uh, heat sink which I place directly on the CPU and this is more than enough for cooling by side the testing here. And then let's start. Yeah, so it's recognizing here already the AMD X5 with a clock of 160 MHz, nice. Yeah, so first let's go to the BIOS and set all wait states and circle timings to the lowest value. Unfortunately this board gives us not too many possibilities in the BIOS but enough to pimp the throughput. So then let's restart the system and yes it's booting straight off our SD card with F5. You can skip loading the configs and auto exec. For benchmarking I'm always loading plain DOS without any drivers. Yeah, the AMD is very stable at this clock. I have several of those CPUs in my collection and only two of them were not working at 160 MHz. But here no issues, everything is running fine and smooth. Also Quake is running surprisingly well on this AMD and shines at the end with 16.8 frames per second, which is an extremely good result for a Socket 3 setup. I'm using several programs for benchmarking as Speedsys 3D Bench 1.0C, Dr. Hart for some synthetic CPU marks and PC Player. Yeah, after a lot of testing and making notes, we are finally done to check out all the results. Yeah, in this video I will not cover the original clock speeds because the performance increments are almost linear to the clock speed, but I did measure all of them and in the description below you can find a zip file for download which contains all speedsys screenshots and tables. For the CPU benchmark at speedsys the Pentium Overdrive took clearly the lead with 74 points, second the AMD with 60 and the Cyrix with a score of 55. Also with level 1 cache speed, the Pentium shines here with 194 MB per second after the AMD and the Cyrix with around 140 MB. This is of course no surprise due to the much better cache management of the Pentium. At Norton Sysinfo, the AMD takes the lead with a score of 346. The Pentium and the Cyrix got here the same value of 316. In Dr. Hart 3.1, the Pentium won here again with 97,000 Hearthstones and the Cyrix took the last place far away with a score of 58,000. Also the FPU benchmark at Dr. Hart goes clearly to the Pentium with 36,000 points. About 15% below we can find the AMD and again Cyrix lost this one. In 3D Bench the AMD was again slightly faster than the Pentium with 93 frames per second. And at the PC player the Pentium turned it again around with 1 frames per second ahead. Also the Cyrix is defending its last place again with a lack of 4 frames compared to the Pentium. Yeah, Doom is this game for benchmarking a Socket 3 setup. AMD clearly won here with almost 61 frames per second, behind the Pentium with 54 and again Cyrix with 50 FPS on the last place. But don't worry, all CPUs here are maxing out the game when you play it at 35 frames per second. Yeah, this shows nicely that Doom was programmed for the 486 and uses its resources perfectly. The last benchmark is then Quake. This game was programmed for Pentium systems and is heavily using the floating point unit, therefore I expect here to see the Pentium overdrive in the lead. And yes, we got 23.5 FPS with the overdrive. That's a very good result because we are still working here on a Socket 3 platform. And the AMD, 
with 16.8 frames was surprising me a lot. This is a really top result here. I think the world record on a Socket 3 setup with Quake was around 17 frames per second. Yeah, and again, the Cyrix far behind with 14 FPS. If we put here all results into a chart, we can already guess who the winner will be. The cache benchmark I will not take under consideration for the final rating, cause the cache speed is at the end influencing all other benchmarks anyhow. The top performer here is then the Pentium Overdrive. With 60 MHz less than the AMD, it shows clearly the advantage of this technology. Nevertheless, the AMD took a good second place and was from my point of view defending its Legion very good as the fastest 486 CPU. I was a bit disappointed of the Cyrix here and expected of course much more. Maybe the Cyrix performance can get increased a bit by enabling certain bits and functions by special programs. Yeah, maybe this in another video. At the end we got here three solid CPUs which can handle nicely the overclocking and the whole setup here you can definitely call as a high-end setup. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so please subscribe, thumbs up and leave me some comments if you want to communicate. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.